the man who loves walking will walk further than the man who loves the destination. So what's happened along that process? You've learned to love the journey, right? You love the journey. Man, when you love the journey, the goals just happen. The, the, you hit milestones as a side effect, right? Because it doesn't matter. At that point, I don't care if I can lift this much weight or run this fast. I mean, that's cool and it's great and I love it, but I don't love it as much as I love the journey. I love the journey. What does the journey consist of? Sucking at something, failing, getting better, learning, start a new journey, start it over, do it again. Oh, the journey now involves now I'm aging. My joints hurt. How do I figure that out? Oh, the process. Here we go. And so when you fall in love with the journey, everything else takes care of itself. Welcome to a new video. So yeah, as you saw, there's some squatting and benching over the past today. Today's Tuesday, November, I don't even know. Um, but we just finished bench, but I'm just gonna break down squat because we're actually feeling really good right now. So in my last video, if you remember, um, I was talking about doing a little bit of the hamstring tendon issue on squat. Um, yesterday's probably the best squat has felt in a few weeks. So hopefully um, we can kind of keep that keep that trending. Um, I had very, very minimal discomfort. Really didn't bother me to the very end. Um, so I was able to pretty much do a whole workout rather comfortably. So that was obviously a big dub. Whoa, why did that fall like that? But anyway, that was obviously a really, really big dub. So hopefully we can keep trending squats. Um, but other than that, and the main thing was, so what we figured out was that the issue was primarily stemming from sumo. So what we've done is this block, we took sumo out and we're just doing conventional. Um, and now I say conventional loosely because I'm really just pulling light conventional, like 405, 4, 455, you know, just for a few reps here and there. Um, not really pushing conventional at all um, because that's not my main stance. Uh, deadlift and I haven't done conventional like 
for a whole block, like seriously, for like a really, really long time. So I'm treating this block super, super light to lay a foundation for conventional um, in case I needed to expand on that in the next few blocks, right? So it's basically, we're doing conventional, but I can already tell just by doing conventional one week, didn't stress my ten tendon at all on pools, and I felt really good on squat yesterday. So that was obviously a re really, really good day. Um, and then today, bench, upper body felt phenomenal. Probably the best I felt in a really long time. Um, but yeah, so now we just gotta keep training, you know? Um, show up every day, lift, stay in the pocket, and uh, hit the process, as you could tell by that clip in the beginning. That's one of my favorite clips, by the way, um, because I feel like I just, I kind of entitle that a lot, especially with my training, um, because personally, like, I don't really care to compete at the moment. Um, and even in the past, I haven't really cared to compete here and there um, because I just wanna lift for myself and I just wanna get stronger for myself. And that's primarily what my goal is. Um, and then just happen, happening to compete along the way is just an added benefit, right? So that's just always been my uh, approach to training. And I remember like during COVID happened when like we didn't know, like, so COVID was coming. I was supposed to do collegiate nationals, right, that year. Um, I had like the second or third highest nominated total in my weight class. So I was thinking I was gonna get like a podium spot. COVID happened, okay, me got shut down. And I remember I was telling Joey, I was like, I could like never compete again in my life and I would probably be fine and still train the way I train. Like competitions don't really motivate me. Like I'm not really motivated by that. Um, but that's just how my mindset was. Like during COVID, I was like, dude, I don't like, I could never compete again, but I'm still gonna show up every day and train just as hard. And I feel like, I feel like that's how I've always been. And I feel like that's what's probably allowed me as much success as, I, as I've had in powerlifting is that I'm not caught up in the numbers game because I am so focused on just lifting and training hard for myself that it just comes, you know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, that's pretty much the process. When I say the process, that's what I'm about right there. Um, so I just wanted to get this video out real quick. Just got some clips. Um, I got a lot of good feedback on my last video. So if you guys like this style of video, high quality training clips, a little bit of breakdown in the car, um, I can keep cranking those out every now and then and then we should be we should be good. But I'm looking forward to a, um, a really good next few blocks of training. I think we can hit something really, really nice because I'm feeling really good right now. Um, and, and once my squat starts feeling a lot better, which it should, my output's still pretty solid regardless of how it's been feeling. So I'm pretty confident um, we could hit something nice relatively soonish, quote unquote. Even though I don't like to push my squat that much, um, like I don't even like to do RP8 on squat because that's just, just doing too much, man. Um, like I ain't doing that shit. But anyway, we're feeling good. So if you like this video, thumbs it up, um, like, subscribe, comment if there's anything you wanna see or any questions or whatnot, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.